Uh, in this section, we're going to learn about implicit differentiation. What is implicit differentiation? So remember, when we were asked to find y prime, it meant to be dy dx. It means find the derivative of y with respect to the variable x. With respect to the variable x. So if we wanted to find um, the derivative of x squared, how did we do it? We, we just said it's 2x, right? Because the derivative of x squared with respect to x is just dx squared dx, it's x, uh, 2x. Okay, so when we say 2x, by the chain rule, by the chain rule, the way this works is when I'm finding the derivative of x squared, like this, it means I'm finding the, I bring the two down, subtract one from the exponent times the derivative of the inside, which is this one. So that would give us 2x times the derivative of x is 1. Derivative of x is 1. So the answer, that's why the answer is 2x. That's why the answer is 2x. But if we would like to find, how do we find the derivative of y squared derivative like that? The way it works is you bring the 2 down, bring the 2 down, um, subtract 1 from the exponent, so you, you get 2 minus 1, times the derivative of the inside, so the derivative of, of, uh, of y. And what do we get here? 2y, derivative of y is y prime. Keep that in mind, derivative of y is y prime. So why is that? Because I'm going to write here derivative of y, y prime, or dy dx, like that. That's, that's what it is. That's y prime. So if we would like to find the derivative of y cubed, find actually y prime for y cubed. How do you do this? What do we get? 3y squared times y prime. Don't forget times y prime. 3y squared y prime. So now what happened here is in, in the past what we learned, we learned if you are given a function f of x equals y equals something something, then you could find y prime because because you already had y is being solved for like y equals something that you already know but uh, in here what happens is um, in some cases if they ask you to find y prime but you can't solve for y or it's it's really difficult to do so if let's say x squared plus y squared equals 2020 let's say how do we do this? Well, as I said, you can solve for y from here in terms of, of the x and the numbers. But one thing we can do here is we can, um, if we try to solve for y here, it might make things more complicated. It might make it more complicated. So what do we do instead? Instead of solving for y here and get like square roots and we can differentiate both sides. Both sides implicitly so why because in the past in before when we had y equal this y was explicitly equal to this y equals something explicit but here we're not going to solve for y or we some in some cases it's impossible to solve for y explicitly so that's why we're going to do differentiate both sides implicitly with respect to x of course with respect to the variable x And what do we get in this case? Watch. When you differentiate x squared, that's simply 2x. What's the derivative of y squared? It's 2y, y prime equals to 0. 2y, y prime equals 0. You can divide by 2 as you can see. And remember, they ask us to find y prime. So subtract x on both sides and then divide by y. So you get negative x over y. Is that okay? Now find as another example y prime if um, x squared y plus 
x y square equals x minus one. So we start by differentiating both sides implicitly. Notice we have x squared times y. These are two functions, something times something, and x times y squared. So to differentiate this, we differentiate the first one. Um, so um, plus, as, as I said, the derivative of this equals derivative on the right side. Here we use product rule, derivative of the first one times the second plus first times the derivative of the second plus derivative of x is one times y squared plus x times two y y prime equals one minus zero. So then keep the terms that with the y prime on one side of the equation and subtract the other terms to the other side. Why do we do so? Because we are required to find y prime. So you can factor y prime out you get x squared plus 2xy equals 1 minus 2xy minus y squared. So then y prime would be 1 minus 2xy minus y squared all over x squared plus 2xy. That's y prime, which is the same as dy dx. Next example, again, find y prime for 1 plus x equals sine xy squared. Hope everyone tried it. So derivative of one is zero, derivative of x is one. Uh, to recall, derivative of sine u, it's u prime cosine u. So it's x y squared derivative cosine x y squared. So derivative of this one is one times y squared, x times two y y prime cosine x y squared. This stays the same here. We get y squared plus 2xy y prime cosine xy squared. We need to solve for y prime. So we need to distribute here in this case. Keep this the same. y squared cosine xy squared plus 2xy y prime cosine xy squared. There's only one term that contains the y prime. So we can subtract the y square cosine x y square from both sides. Keep this the same. Then we can divide to get y prime one minus y square cosine x y square divided by two x y cosine x y square. Hey professor, do you need to distribute the Another example, y sine x square equals x sine y square. Differentiate both sides uh, using the product rule. So derivative of y is y prime. So what do we get here? y prime sine x square plus y times 2x cosine x square. Derivative of x is 1 times sine y square plus x times 2y y prime cosine y square. Let's rewrite it first in a simplified form. This is 2xy cosine x square. Sine y square plus 2xy y prime cosine y square. So this has y prime, this has y prime. What we can do, keep the y prime term on one side. Move the other one to the other side. Then factor y prime out. Then divide, so y prime equals sine y square.
let's look at uh, this other example slightly different than the ones we've done already if g of x plus x times sine of g of x equals x squared the question is asking find g prime at zero find g prime at zero so let's go over it if you want to try it the first thing comes to mind is differentiate both sides g prime of x plus x times so the derivative of x is 1 times sine of g of x plus product rule x times what's the derivative of sine of u it's u prime cosine u derivative of x squared is 2x now if they ask us to find g prime at 0. So if we substitute x equals 0, we get g prime of 0 plus sine of g of 0 plus this is gone. This is all 0 equals 0. So g prime of 0 is negative sine g of 0. So how do you find this out? We need to find g of 0. We can go back to the original equation and substitute x equals 0. What do we get? g of 0 plus 0 equals 0. So g of 0 is 0. So g prime of 0 is negative sine of 0. And we know sine of 0 is 0. So the answer for g prime of 0 is 0. Now um, let's see if we are asked to find y double prime, the second derivative, for the equation x to the fourth plus y to the fourth is a to the fourth, where a is a constant. We need to find y double prime. So first we differentiate both sides we get 4x cubed plus 4y cubed y prime equals to 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0. Divide by 4. Now, then differentiate both sides. Again, for this last answer. So we get 3x squared plus, here we have a product of two things. We find the derivative of the first one, 3y squared y prime times the second one, plus y cubed times y double prime equals 0. When we are asked to find y double prime, we need to find in terms of x, y number, not in terms of y prime. So from the first equation, you may be able to solve for y prime and get negative x cubed over y cubed. Substitute this into this equation. Instead of y prime, we're going to replace it with negative x cubed over y cubed squared. y cubed y double prime. Three x squared plus three. Uh, there will be y to the six cancels out, so that makes it y to the fourth. Then multiply everything by y to the fourth. So three x squared y to the fourth plus three x to the six plus y to the seventh y double prime. Then it's easy to finish it from here by isolating the y double prime or the term containing y double prime. So y double prime becomes negative 3x squared y to the fourth minus 3x to the six over y to the seven. There's another part to this section talks about inverse trig derivatives.
will show you formulas to find derivatives for inverse trigonometric functions. The first one is sine inverse of x. And remember, you can rewrite this as arc sine of x, or u, let's say u. It doesn't have to be just x, it could be any function u. y prime is u prime, the formula for it, over the square root of 1 minus u square. And to apply it, find y prime if y equals arc sine of e to the x. Arc sine of e to the x. So how do you find y prime? It's the derivative of u. This is the u. Derivative of this over the square root of 1 minus u square. Derivative of e x, if you remember from previous sections, is simply itself over the square root of 1 minus e to the 2x. Since we started with, cos uh, with sine, we're going to do our cosine or cosine inverse of u. y prime is the same formula as the sine inverse. The only thing there's a negative in the front. So try this one, y prime, there's always a negative sign, derivative of this is 2x over the square root of 1 minus this one square. You can leave it like this, and if you like to simplify more, you can just multiply the stuff under the square root. There's one for tangent inverse or arc tangent, there's one for cotan inverse or cotan or arc cotan y prime is u prime over 1 plus u square again the same idea same formula is just there's a minus in there there's a minus so find y prime if y equals tangent inverse of sine x y equals cotan inverse of secant of 5x. For uh, number 1 here, it's the derivative of sine x over 1 plus sine x squared which is cosine x over 1 plus sine square of x. y prime is the derivative of secant of 5x with a negative sign over 1 plus secant of 5x square. Negative Derivative of secant u is u prime secant tangent, like so, divided by 1 plus secant square of 5x. That's all, you can't simplify more. The last two trig functions, secant inverse of u and cosecant inverse of u y prime is u prime over the absolute value of u square root of u square minus 1. And this one, same formula, just a negative sign on the top. Absolute value of u square root of u square minus 1. Find y prime if y equals x square secant inverse of x plus 11 cosecant inverse of x 
cube. Okay, we may go over this one. Y prime using product rule 2x times the second function plus x squared times the derivative of secant inverse of x plus 1, which says the derivative of this absolute value of that part, square root of that part square mi minus 1 minus this looks like a u u to the third so it's three cosecant inverse of x squared times the derivative of cosecant inverse of x this stays the same stays the same minus 3, keep this the same. Uh, derivative of this is negative, so that become positive. Uh, u prime, so derivative of x is 1 over the absolute value of that over the square root of x squared minus 1.